December. Don't worry, it's not. It's just December when I'm recording this. So. Morning, folks. How are you doing? Whoa, that was loud. Morning, folks. How are you doing today? I'm not doing all right. I'm, you know, I'm getting into the swing of things, getting back into the swing. It's been a while. It's been a while since I recorded one of these. I say it's been a while. It's probably not been that long. It's been, it was at least November since I last recorded one of these. Maybe? Yeah, that's when I did the last story one. Don't know what I was talking about. Either way, let's, who's ready for a story? I'm ready for a story. I told you, this one may end up being kind of chaotic. I don't really have a, a juxtaposition to go with on that but I do have an idea to talk about and that, that that idea is ideas and we're gonna we're gonna delve into that because I figured it's January right it's January people love to come out find new things do new things explore themselves not in that way mind out the good please um yeah you know explore what they're gonna do with <laughs> was that interlude? <laughs> was, yeah hmm yeah, that's a, you know, that's a real interesting point you raised there, Graham. You, you're talking about things, and then you, you stop and go, yeah, that's not me, I don't know, either way. But it's January. People love a New Year's resolution. I actually have a New Year's resolution this year. I haven't had one for a very long time. Um, I won't go into it today, but we may, you know, maybe we'll discuss that another time. But um, we, we like to, as humans, do a hard reset in January, because... We set our calendar up to run from January, and whether you agree with that or not, some cultures don't. In this side of the culture, we we did that. You know, we 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 decided you know January through to December. So then everyone saw that as a stopping point. They saw saw that as the end of the year. They saw that as the end of things. In the UK, they decided that for some reason taxes would go on through through to April, but in the US they didn't. They said tax year should also end in December. So. That's what they did. And we like to see that as kind of a stopping point and a hard reset to sit and gather information about our own lives and gather information about the things we do on a day-to-day basis and, and you know, take stock. Take stock. Even even that I do. I do. I like, you know, I'm not a person who likes to set these barriers. I like to drift through them like some sort of dog at a uh, speed running contest where they go through the hypes and loops and I just go round and round and round until I tire myself out and that's that's essentially what I do but people like to do that so I thought this would be a good good little topic to sit down and talk to so I was talking to my friend James recently James shout out to you you inspired this podcast you should know that I have no idea if you listen to these things I'm assuming you don't I assume nobody does judging by just you know my impression of people and whether this is worthwhile, but I keep doing it anyway. Shout out to uh, my comments. Either way, we we were having this conversation about ideas he's had for things to make. Right? TLDR, James owns a 3D printer. It's a great 3D printer. He's great at print, 3D printing things. I think he's fantastic at doing these things. I would love to see him do more of it. But he runs out of time. He runs out of energy. He runs out of things which, you know, are required to see a project through to the end. And I had this idea. And we were chatting back and forth. And we were talking about kind of business. And how this could be a business. And turning things which you have as a hobby into making you some money. And then getting you out of the corporate rat race. Blah, 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 blah. All those points. And... We were discussing it, and I was saying, and this is something we'll discuss you know, in a later podcast, that people like people like silly things, right? That's the thing which sells. That's probably the thing which I see mostly 3D printed is that people like silly things. They like these things which, you know, come up and, and shock them a little bit, shock them out of their little, little day-to-day life, and they go, oh. That's a thing. That's fun. I like that. I'll buy that. And that's what they like. So we were talking about this, and I was talking about ways to kind of generate these ideas. And we ended up in this larger conversation about how there are too many ideas, in James's opinion. And this is a conversation I've had with many people, especially just people in their day-to-day lives who say, oh, I have too many. I have too many thoughts. I have too many ideas. And I'm sort of thinking, Really? You have too many ideas. Okay. All right. Too many ideas. To me, too many ideas is not a problem. 
<laughs> too many, to me, too many ideas is a day-to-day feeling, which I've learned to live with in 34 years of my life. But too, too many ideas is not a problem. But it did inspire me to tidy my own ideas into one document. Because I do the thing, I do the thing where, you know, you have an idea and I think I'll write that down. I'll write that down in a note to myself. My Facebook Messenger conversation with myself is ridiculous. I can't even get the ideas out of there because it's too long. It's too long and it's too awkward to copy that entire dictate and try and figure out some semblance of reality. So I've just thrown ideas and I accept if they're in there, they're lost. But I was holding ideas on my notes on my old phone, my notes on my new phone, which I got to replace my old phone, notes on my computer, sticky notes. I have physical written notes. I had all of these notes. And James inspired me to call it them because I thought to myself, that, I mean, he's in some ways, right? There is too many ideas, but that's not a problem. Too many ideas is not a problem. I'll get to I'll get to why in a minute. And so I listed them out. I listed out all the ideas. And I thought to myself, what James is actually saying is that he doesn't have enough time in the day to execute the ideas that he has and put into them the effort and the worthwhileness. That's a word. I'm making it. Which is required, in his opinion. So if he does anything, he'll feel like he's half assed in it. He'll feel like he's not really engaging with it in a proper way. And that's not really a feeling I have or can relate to. Because when I put anything into an idea, even if it's just 10 minutes of thinking into an idea, I feel like I'm spending my time productively because I'm thinking about it. I'm doing the, I'm doing the, I could do a sketch. I've discussed this before at length. The, the whole idea of the 1% theory, which is where you put 1% into something so you have a sketch of the thing and then you leave it alone. It doesn't matter. You still have 1%. You have 1% to go back to. Even if you hate that thing which you were doing, you go back and you're like, oh, well, I hated that. So if I progress with this idea, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to you know, move on. You've got the 1%. Loading time takes into account failures, right? That's that's the simplest way I can put that. Anyway, but we, we were saying, so there's not enough hours in the day and, you know, you feel drained and you feel physically raw and all these kinds of things. And that means that when you do have ideas, they fall to the wayside and that can be overwhelming. And I completely understand that. I understand the, the disappointment of not being able to execute things in a manner which you see as preferable or do it the justice you you thought there is another concept which i will potentially discuss another time which is just around the format of things and how things kind of come to be the amount of ideas i've had which i have the idea or i have the concept in my brain i'm thinking this is a great concept this would this would work on so many levels and i'm thinking to myself but i have no idea how to represent it i have no idea if i want it to be something illustrated i don't know if i want it to be sculpture i don't know if i want it to be just a video i make and i have to deal with that and that's that's the thought process i'm putting into it and that's the that's the time measured and that's my one percent you know figuring that out is the one percent but in some ways i'm going to have to try it in a few formats to figure it out there's a few concepts which i've done which i repeat and you will see that in my work you see that in the stuff i've put out there's there are concepts out there which i repeat and have done in the podcast and you may have noticed if you watched the podcast a few times. I mean, you know, if you gone past the episode one and, and thought, you know, first 10 minutes, you're like, this guy's a little crazy. But, you know, it works. It, it moves through. Anyway, so I made this note list of my ideas. We will get back to the point. You know, I'm going to bring it all back. I made this note list of ideas. And in some ways, it represents the ramblings of a madman. In other ways, it represents... The rambling of someone who is not fully engaging with any idea and instead is just courting the realm of ideas in order to get something, trying to find something significant. And this is the dredge, right? This is this is the mulch of running your hands through the dirt to try and find something golden. That's that's what it is. But either way, I so I have like I have sixty four ideas for solo podcasts for these. I have a list of 64 one-liners which are meant to inspire me to do this, to do what we're doing today. 64. In a year, I don't put out 64, which means I have enough and more, and I will add to that list. I will keep adding to this. This whole conversation isn't even on that list. 
It's just not that. Anyway, I have 14 one-liners, which have no place to be. Those are the ones which I'm talking about, where I'm like, I don't really know what form this is, but I have I have one-lined one-liners. They're just pithy phrases, which I've come up with and thought, you know, that'd be good. That's a cool little, cool little concept nugget right there. What that nugget becomes while we hammer it out? Who knows? Maybe it'll become a ring. Maybe it'll come in a little necklace. Maybe I'll just use it to gold leaf cake. Who knows? 42 uh, art ideas. Just illustrations, sketches, t-shirts. 42. 11 on top of the 42 <laughs> fine art ideas. Which are ones which I've I've set to sign and said, hey, these are these are high concept. These are things which I think basically when I get a little pretentious, that's where that's where the fine art ideas came through. So where does this leave me? It leaves me with a lot. It leaves me with a big list, which I can understand. If I handed someone this list and said execute on this list, they would not know where to start. And in many ways, I don't know where to start. And I can't particularly give you advice on that because this is my list and this is my brain. And I work the way I work. This is the first time in a long while that I've sat and made a list. I don't tend to make a list. I just note things down and then I come back to them. And that's, that seems to work for a point. doesn't give me a good brand because I do a bit of everything. But it gives me, gives me enjoyment, gives me satisfaction. And that's what I'm really in this for, you know, to, to get that satisfaction. Anyway, so I did a quick Google. And I did a quick look up. And I tried to see what other people give advice for when it comes to this. Now, bear in mind, I come from an industry which is project based. I come from an industry which is managing and executing of projects in order to achieve profit. And I'm not that kind of person, as I've just described. I have the big goopy abstract mess, and every so often I dunk my hands into it and pull out something. That's what I do. And I execute that on my own time frame. And I execute that out of my own, own steam. Which is why if I ever ran a business, I would run a business into the ground. You know, this is why I shouldn't be given millions. Because if someone hands me millions for completing one good project, like one good idea, like one good short film or something, and they say, hey, this is great. Here's a million dollars. Here's a million, here's a million dollars. Here's two million pounds. Whatever the exchange rate is. That's great. But I, I shouldn't be trusted with that level of financial incentive because I won't do things for the sake of making that financial incentive last forever I do things for the sake of my emotional satisfaction and that's why I make art anyway the list which I found of advice it kind of made me angry well not angry disgruntled I have been disgruntled I have been imbued with a sense of ennui that this is the advice they give because the advice that they give for ideas ideas being abstract little concepty things isn't based around appreciating what an idea is they're all based around profit they're all based around business they're all based around that oh, you know, good is better than perfect <laughs> and they all laugh to themselves and sit back in their teslas and drink the blood of children capitals anyway and one of the lines you know i'm going to give you an example so one of the lines was you can't catch all the fish if you're trying to catch them all or you can't catch a fish if you're trying to catch them all it's a pithy slogan i understand the concept of it what they're saying is if you were in a river and the river was filled with fish if you had a fishing rod or your hands and you were indecisive about which fish you wanted you wouldn't catch any of them, you just watch them all rush by. Makes sense, right? However, ignores the fact that we are human. And as humans, we produce solutions for things. And as we produce solutions, we're actually problem solvers in order to reduce the amount of effort we need to put in. So what we would actually do is just put a net at the end of the river and catch all the fish. And we pull out waves and waves of fish. It would destroy the ecosystem. But that's what we do, because we're human. We find simple solutions for things. We make our lives easier. We 
invest in between. And what it proves is, in a line like that, in a line in the business sense, is that they're not enjoying the process. They're annoyed that they're having to make a decision and maybe catch a fish, find out it's the wrong fish, put it back. That's what they're, they're, they're trying to avoid because they get dissatisfied, dissatisfied with having to do that. So they're trying to say, oh, you can't. If you don't focus on one, you don't pick in your brain, you know, what would make the perfect fish, and then I look for that fish. I don't know why he's got slightly more British when I was doing that. He, he's got, he's got his, the accent's gone all over the place. All I'm saying is, sure, you can. You can catch all the fish if you want to catch all the fish, but what would be the point? There'd be no point. You'd destroy the ecosystem. What you should do is learn to enjoy the act of fishing. I know I use cake as a reference a lot, but this fish metaphor has gone gone for ages. The other one was lists. They were saying, make lists. I have just proven making lists just doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work for everybody. Make a list. You should take all of your ideas and you should list them out. You should list them out and you should, you should satisfy your goal need. You should write them down and then you should decide whether they meet your goals and you should decide whether, whether they are profitable and manageable within our economic landscape. No, you shouldn't. I have a list of things which just makes no sense at all. I mentioned Facebook Messenger. Those those are things. I have a list of them. A lot of them are absolute nonsense. I wrote down the other day, artists need to learn to crop and rotate. I wrote that down a couple of months ago. I said the other day a minute ago. was lying. I wrote that down a couple of months ago. Artists need to learn to crop and rotate. Graham, what the hell does that mean? Because I don't know. This I'm talking to you right now, Graham. Not everybody else. Everybody else go away. Shush for a minute. What does that mean? Because we wrote it down. We wrote it down in a note of other ideas. Like that was significant. Like that was something we need to work through. And that we could figure out something cool to do with that. We may have even had it as a podcast idea. But I just need to crop and rotate. The hell does that mean? I could hazard a guess of what that means. But we didn't write down any extra information, did we? No, we just wrote down that one line. And was like, I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember this. Which brings me on to a, 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 maybe a better way of looking at this, right? So I was looking at this from a point of view of business because that's what me and James had started off with. We just, we did initially started discussing this idea of small business ideas which he could do and feel satisfied with and get creative engagement out of, which is great, which is what everyone really wants. They, just, they don't want to work in an office. They want to work in the home, doing whatever they want to do, making some things, using their hands, getting, getting involved with the world out wide, forgetting that, you know, a lot of office business is needed in, in order to keep the world root running. But, you know, some people enjoy that. Accountants seem to enjoy that. I, mean, I say seem, never really spoken to one. Anyway. We, we was looking at you from that point of view, whereas I feel like this is more relevant at the start of the year from a point of view of artistic, creative, cathartic satisfaction, which, pardon me, if you don't know, is what Pancake Day is all about. Anyway, more on that later. So, if we look at it from that point of view, you need to think of it from the mind of creatives. You need to think of it from the mind of, who are the people with the most ideas? Who are the people who have physically put out the most? And when you do that, you think of, you know, prolific filmmakers, prolific book writers. And I always think, you know, I mean, I'd say I always think Laggard's my idea. In my opinion, one of the most prolific creators <laughs> of the writing world is Stephen King. It's not my opinion. That's just a fact. He puts out an absolute ton of books. And there was an interview which I read with him maybe a few few months back, which I found really interesting because people were saying to him, oh, you know, do you ever worry about the idea you're putting out into the world and it being bad? You write so many books. What if those books are bad? And people out there will say Stephen King has written some bad books. I don't know. I haven't actually read that much Stephen King. But people were saying this and they were saying, oh, you know, you have all these ideas. Is this, is this, is this, do you have more ideas than the ones which you're putting out? Of course he does because he's a creative. Because that's what's in his brain, because that's what he's wired to do, so he's been doing it. And now it's basically just muscle memory for him. But he was saying, his point of view was, he doesn't worry about forgetting ideas. He doesn't worry about the list. He doesn't worry about, ah, need to learn to crop and rotate. What he worries about is just creating the work and, and it meeting his level of expectation. Because the ideas that he forgets weren't worth it. If, if it's something which you for, could forget so easily... 
that if you didn't write it down, it would disappear and never come back to you, then it's not worth turning into a full-blown story. It's not worth putting the time and effort and thought into. I just need to crop and rotate. It may come back to me in a few months' time. I'll be sat there having a cup of coffee, thinking to myself, you know what, people need to, oh my God, it's the ice, it's crop and rotate. And that, <laughs> that will come up for me. And that has happened, that has happened many times, at which point I wrote it down again. And this time I'll put more detail on it. Do I have advice? Maybe I have advice. Maybe that's what this is meant to be. I want to give some better way of handling things, which is almost impossible because every single person is wired differently. We're all very similarly wired, but we're all wired using different parts and none of the serial numbers match. So in order to accomplish and achieve anything within your life, within your brain, don't look to you know, another white boy with a podcast like this. Look to yourself. Understand yourself. Understand how you work. Think about solutions you've tried in the past. Think about things you've tried out and failed at. Think about what went wrong, right? Look at the black box of you and understand yourself, how you work, how your brain responds to things. That level of self-awareness will help you no end in trying to complete anything you want to complete, right? And when it comes to ideas and it comes to cataloging those ideas, you'll know as well. Some of you will like lists. You'll like to-do lists. You'll like bullet journals. You'll like having a record and a vlog and a, a, a daily recording of all the things you're going on. I don't. I find that that's just noise which gets in my way of trying to get things done, of trying to create things. But it might work for you. So know what works for you because if you know yourself, you know what works for you. And then the other side of that is that if you're disheartened by the idea that the last few times you've tried something like that, you failed, or in your view you failed, I would say you haven't failed, I'd say you got the 1%, you figured out what you didn't want to do. Look at that and understand that you should try other things. I think that the, the biggest view of this I can give is when people try to lose weight and get into better shape than they're in. At the start of the year, they'll try things, and then they'll fail at that thing, and they'll give up which is fine, you know, everyone has their own methodology, their own barriers to overcome, and you can work around that, sure, couch to 5k didn't work for you, but maybe something else will, tracking your calories didn't work for you, but maybe something else will, and you keep trying those things, until you find something which does fit, and maybe, maybe it's not even just one of them solutions, maybe it's a combination of those solutions, I've been trying to do a pull-up for a year. I still can't do a pull-up because I'm trying to figure out how I can get into that rhythm of trying to do these things. I'm trying to learn about myself. And the final part of this, right, is accept that loss is inevitable. Loss of ideas, loss of progress, loss of ambition, loss of, loss of interest in what you're doing is inevitable. It's not a bad thing. Usually when that happens, it means that you've been approaching something from a way which didn't work for your life at that particular moment. And categorize if you do have a list, if you have a backlog, if you have a methodology, if you have something which is overwhelming you, right? The simplest way to cut through all of that, cut very core to the point, if you want to progress with that, and progress with that big, gloopy pile of stuff dig your hands in find the idea is figure out what's possible now and what's possible when time permits and focus on the possible now and some of that may be pushing your hand into the dirt pulling out something big old chunk of gold thinking to yourself this is amazing this is fantastic but I can't process this. I have no skills which allow me, no machinery, no processes to be able to. So you push it back into the dirt, write down the coordinates and say, this is where it is. This is where the big idea is. This is where the idea is when I've done the little ideas and someone comes along and says, hey, I got a processing plan which will help you process that. And you go, I've got just the space for you. And in the end, you may go back and it may be gone. Someone else may have picked it up. But it didn't stop you getting to the point where people take notice of you. 
look at you and go, something to value then. You're that little gold nugget for a moment. So start of the year. I hope you're all safe and well. If you are taking the time in the new year to reflect, hopefully this provided some insight into how to do that. Shout out again to James. He gave me the ideas for this podcast. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you.